Right, so um, I, I'll move on to shale because this is really where the, the drift of it is. First, of, uh, it is the US is 40 times the land area of the UK, so they've got a lot of room to play. Uh, I, I, two BCF per day is some, something to think about, which is 20% uh, of UK demand. The famous shale uh, unconventional plays in the US uh, is the Barnett. It produces five bees a day. There are 16,500 wells plus another 2,500 permitted. The Barkin isn't really a shale play. It's got a little silty member. It produces from a silty member. It's what we call a halo oil. So the, the, it, it's um, priced in by $100 a barrel. It, it's, not un, it's not unconventional other than its low rate. Um, but the one I want to talk about is the Eagle Ford, which is the poster child. Uh, that's 8,000 square miles, 3,500 wells, 217 rigs, and it produces two BCF per day. So if you want the, the, to reproduce the Eagle Ford, which you probably for your two BCF per day, you're going to have 8,000 miles, square miles, 3,500 well, 200 rigs drill. It's not going to happen. Okay, so the, the, you know, there's 4,500 permits in 2012. This is moose pasture. You've got to have a lot of moose pasture to um, drill up shale gas, you know, and the Lake District just doesn't hack it. This is what's when it's drilled up. This is the Barnett. This is what it looks like. And, uh, I, you know, I put it to you, we'll never, never see that. I don't think, anyway, see that in the UK, even if it works. This is a fracking collection. There are 50 trucks there. Uh, it's, it pumps 10,000 tonnes of water, um, etc. I don't think there are this many uh, pumper trucks in the UK. So a typical frack size in Canada is 5,000 feet horizontal, 1,000 tons of propent, 70, there's the 10,000 tons of water, plus biocides, fact, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It, of itself, is harmless. It's what you do with the flowback. The, the, Alberta's the most frack place on Earth, maybe close to Texas, I don't know, and they're just fine, thank you. So the, all this fracking goes on at sub, you know, eight, 10,000 feet, and the, the aquifers are up at a few hundred. They don't talk to each other. <coughs> um, George Mitchell took 18 years to make the Barnett work, so the chances of uh, it working here instantly are low. Okay, this is, I'm going to get a little bit more technical. The unconventional basically exploits the, exploits the source rock rather than conventional traps or seal, etc. Talked about halo oil. Um, I think the thing that really makes it work in the US is that the landowner gets the royalty. So we used to drill a lot of wells in the US. They'd say, come along in, knock the top off, make a nice flat pad here so we can put a house on later. And if you find something, we get the royalty. So the landowners would welcome people in. Um, here, it's not. They're talking about where to divvy up the spoils before they've started drilling. OK. Um, so another important point is shale is a size classification, not a mineralo mineralogical classification. You need very low uh, V clay, and I'll come on to that in a minute. T max appears to be uh, a critical uh, thing. Overpressure is very, very good, and obviously thick is good. The basic thing is to frack something, it's got to be brittle, and to be brittle, it has low V clay. So it's got to, which, which is measured quite easily by Poisson's ratio. So you go from glass at 0.5 to mud at 0.2 or something. Okay. Uh, just another picture of uh, the Barnet. And then I can contrast all that with Quadrilla. Here, they're getting into all sorts of trouble trying to permit one well where the other people are doing 5,000 a month. So this, this is just for interest. That people are going to protest, they'll fight. You know, it's, there's not, there's the political will is not there for um, the sort of density of drilling that's required for shale gas. Now, some technical points. I'll, I hope um, uh, people can see that. 
But these are the important things. Uh, TOC, uh, porosity, sort of, uh, water saturations, uh, un, un, um, acceptable. <coughs> Permeability, we're, we're talking hundreds of nanodarcy. And uh, as, as I will put up later, the average gas molecule over 10 years travels one meter. Okay. Um, so, um, the hardness, um, the Poisson's ratio is the important thing. You need a low Poisson's ratio so it fractures, not, doesn't uh, deform like mud. And it's becoming increasingly, so the water gradient's 0.443, something like that. These things are overpressured. And so you can, you can in your mind, the uh, source rock burps out hydrocarbons. It, uh, at, normally it's a pressure and it'll migrate. In the uh, shales, it doesn't migrate, it stays there. So if you have a prolific source uh, shale rock, uh, uh, shale, it'll be overpressured. Fractures uh, play into it, uh, but I, which I won't bother with now. And obviously thick is good. So this goes, just makes the point about the mineralogy. All those good places, Eagle Ford, Horn River, etc., cetera, are, are, are very low clay. And it doesn't really matter whether they're silicates or carbonates, as long as, long as they have very low clay. This also, for your later perusal, this is a horizontal well with 10 uh, uh, frac points. So this is done, we use a company called Packers Plus. It's got a tapered string, and you put balls down, and it fracks each bit uh, in turn. With, as I've said, maybe a 1,000 uh, barrels of water per frac. The point about uh, these unconventional wells, they decline very, very fast. So you can see it goes from 250 barrels a day to 50 within a year. This is from uh, a company I'm uh, involved with. This is a Montney. It, uh, the last one was liquids. This goes from three and a half million cubic feet per day to under a million in two years. So they decline very, very fast, and they're unpredictable. So this is a picture of the uh, initial production, four-month average IP drilled by Shell in Western Canada. Nothing. There was no learning here whatsoever. It's all random. It's a crapshoot. Okay. And I put these up for people's perusal later. Um, the rate versus ultimate recovery, maybe. Uh, production, initial production, uh, is there any learning over time? No. Uh, frac size versus ultimate, no. Uh, peak month gas events against ultimate recovery, no. So people really don't understand uh, at the moment what's going on. As we, it's, we're in a geological building, shales are as variable as any other depositional environment. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And in detail, people don't know. Again, the important thing is, that you, uh, as uh, Brian Hepp would understand, B is the important thing here, to know whether your well is going to flatten out, i.e. hyperbolic or exponentially decline. The only reason that the, it works in North America is because they're hyperbolic, not exponential. This is what I was uh, saying. Gas molecule movement in shale is on the order of 10 feet in the lifetime of a well, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, a meter per year, et cetera. Right, that's just a second. Uh -huh. Okay, so, so what about that is you get, you pile decline upon decline and eventually you can't offset the decline rates, and so the thing peaks, um, a bit like conventional oil. So th the projections of U.S. domestic production going you know, forever, it's just rubbish, in, in my mind, because it's composed of these high decline wells. And here, they, this is uh, the EIA's uh, projection. Um, they've got deep water Gulf of Mexico, as I say, in my mind, maybe. Anyway, the type that Lower 48 onshore tight oil is C5, and they, people don't use C5, don't consume C5. That makes the same point. So, what happens? For 
companies doing unconventional. The debt piles up, the, the approved reserves go up, so they made a sh make a shed load of money, but the, sh the actual shareholders' equity dives through the floor. I find this is, a, in, for me, very, very powerful. This is energy return on energy invested. Okay, so in the good old days, like in the year 2000, a gas well would make mm, 35 times the gas production would be contain 35 uh, times the energy that it required to drill a well. According to this plot, by about 2014, it takes as much energy to get out as you produce. Ceteris paribus, it means it's uneconomic if everything's properly priced, but they're not, not properly priced, so you, know, you, you do have people limping along, but uh, I'll bet Quadrilla never makes any money, for example. Okay. Um, this, this is a slide showing how many wells you need to know what you've got if you're drilling up a new shale, uh, uh, for example, a Boland shale. The, uh, you need to drill at least 20 to 25 wells and test before you get any feel for the play at all. So the chance of doing that with one well is nil. And, and um, in conventional plays, you can do that. One, two, three, okay, let's go. You can't do that with Shen. So that's what I intended to say. So.